I walked some evenings, some some evenings I would walk from the point waterfront yeah. to a new lens. Because I'm saving the low that I have to be able to buy meals for an ekai so that my siblings go to school. Yeah, yeah. So I'm very proud of who I am. I people can call me broke or whatever the case may be. I know that I'm not broke. So there are aspects of my life um, that I will never reveal um, that are between myself, my yes. family. And we became um, and who God. we are because of that past and that history. Mm. We became strong women mm. because we know who we are. Our fundus and all of that, I mean, I heard the, the audible voice of God. It wasn't the decision. It was the decision. It was a panic. That one, yeah. Like Christ himself. What was that about? Yes. I don't even so know. So you can't know. just trust um, the person who was able to initiate a relationship with your husband knowingly and trust them with your life, with your kid. A fancy restaurant um, in a beautiful place in South Africa. And he left you with Love them. seven Love them. foods, babe. He's not circumcised. I meant our sex. Our sex. I mean, I already do like that. Yes. Will it marry what you say you're doing? Which is the show is Engineer Your Life and I'm Lungelo KM. It's the first episode in a series of episodes where we are going to be speaking to amazing women, which is very fitting since it is Women's Month. So happy Women's Month if you are a woman and you are watching this episode. Um, today I have a very special guest. Uh, Jeez, you know her. If you don't know her, because what do you mean? Where do you live? Which rock do you live under? But firstly, I want to get something out of the way. You know, um, as we continue growing this podcast, we have surpassed 1 million views, right? Which means we're somewhere around 1.1 million views right now. I don't know. We're there. We're not really checking for that because it's all about the content and about giving you guys good content, quality content. But in order for us to be able to do that, we need you to subscribe. Less than 10% of you are subscribed. Imagine, that's like shocking. So please subscribe. Please also join as a member. Like, guys, it's 999. We are upuza. Anyway, I'm, I'm done shouting. My guest is Slee. How are you? Hi, good job, good job. I'm, I'm great. I'm fantastic. The sun is shining. Yes. That's the beauty of Durban. The sun is always shining. It's amazing. Ne? Durban is the best city to be in. Yeah, yeah. You look beautiful as always. Thank you. Ne? I tried. I did this for you. Really? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I made an effort for you. I've never seen this tattoo. Tell me about it. Oh, this I, I little think, thing? Yeah, it's never really shown on TV. No, well, it's it's new. I oh, didn't, oh, when okay. we were shooting, I didn't have it. Sure. So this is basically... A representation, a representation of who I am. Okay. Um, in a sense that it has uh, our family totem, which is a ingonyama, a mm -hmm. lion, and this part where you see the eye is actually yeah. my eye. So it's basically saying that I am my ancestors before I am Usli. Mm -hmm. That is why I'm reflecting here, and the rose obviously reflects life, new birth, new beginnings, beauty. So and then. There's a cross as yeah, well, which yeah. represents prayer, because okay. I am a praying woman. You, as you may know or may not know, give them tenders. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe, maybe let's get into that. Who do you pray to sleep? Because a lot of people um, may be privy to the fact that you are spiritually connected, yeah. but they, it hasn't been broken down in a way that people understand. Like, yeah. who does Usleen Jogu pray to? So I pray to Umbedingang, God, mm -hmm. the God mm -hmm. of our ancestors. Mm -hmm. I pray to the Almighty, the Creator of all things living. Um, before I tap into, uh, before I speak to my ancestors, I believe that my ancestors are my angels. O Abraham Bami, O Chobe Bami, O David Bami. Sure. This is my lineage. These are the people that know who I am. So I pray to God, God who is the governor of everything else. So, Unkulunkulu Kala, Besen Elim Vome, Yogutin Bize, I Amatong, I'm Nesdal Zagiti. That's how I pray. I mean, but there are people who say uh, when you involve ancestors, then Utugile, you're lost. Um, what do you have to say towards that? Because my explanation, what I get from you is that these people are your Abrahams. Yes. So, because the concept of ancestry is that it's just a person who lived the journey and then they've then gone on to be with God. Yes. So to you, you're saying because these people are from my lineage genetically, yes. they are my um, people who've gone on to be with God. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So for, for those people who feel that being 
or having this kind of understanding or view in terms of spirituality is a person that is lost. Um, shame, I, you know, I have no words um, except for pray for them as well so that they realize at some point you need to acknowledge your own. You can't tell me when they were living on earth, they were your parent and you loved them. Yeah. And once they've gone or passed on and moved on to be with God, now they're completely different people or they don't exist. And who, I mean, Abraham is much better than your own grandmother. For me, I find that weird. Why are you praying to the angels or the ancestors of the Jews where you could sure. be praying to your own ancestors yeah. who understands your journey, who understand, who understand where you come from and whom you can communicate in the language that they understand because those are your angels and that's your line of contact to God to get to Unkulunkulu quicker. This is this is my belief, but each to their own. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no, no, no fair. I, I, I don't want to dwell away much from the tattoo and how you explained it to me as an expression of your strength, as an expression of prayer, as an expression of your power. But there's a lot of people who perceive that people get tattoos as an expression of pain. Um, there is a pain they've gone through and there's a rebirth that they're trying to go through. Would you say there's any connection to you and that? Um, the fact of the matter is for us to be where we are, where I am today is not where I was a year ago, okay. right? You have to have gone through some kind of pain. Sure. You have to have gone through some kind of challenge in life. And with that being said, for me to realize my spirituality, I've had to go through the fire to know who I am. And just by virtue of that, this is how I came into understanding my journey with the spiritual world and who Usli is. And this is then what, you know, prompted me to get the tattoo. So you're not wrong. You have to have gone through some kind of pain yeah, yeah. in order for you. It's, it is a representation of rebirth. It's almost like if a woman cuts their hair. Yes. Well, that does not apply <laughs> to me. <laughs> <laughs> not, no, but that yeah. does not apply to me because my hair is forever short. short. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So, um, so I, I feel like you're right in saying that. And it, it is true. Would, would you then say since a lot has changed in your life in the past year and you're going through a rebirth that possibly that pain you went through towards the end of 2021 into last year is the most painful pain you've been through in your life? No, it's not. It isn't. No, it isn't. I think, um, I believe that, I've, I've got a saying that I always, you know, believe in where, I'm, where I am is exactly where I needed to be. Sure. And if, it, if not me, then who? Do you know what I mean? Uh, my life uh, has not been the easiest. Um, I know a lot of people can relate, but also I try not to share a lot about where I've been because also each person's journey is different. And I can't say to Muntu, yeah, because I did this and I worked hard so you can also prevail because it also has everything to do with the chance and everything to do with Abantu Hambanabo being your angels, how much they want things done for you and how hard they're working in the spiritual world to get things done for you. So all I'm saying is that I've experienced worse pain. Yes. Um, I've experienced pain that I cannot even begin to describe. What happened to me? That uh, that was just... It, it's, Part it of was the journey. Yes, it was more of a disappointment than I anything. Hear you. Yes, yeah. yes. It's it's believing in something, believing in someone, and then they disappoint you. Yeah, which happens all the time. By Absolutely. the way. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It happens. It happens all the time. Um, would you say now you're in a better space where you are, you have forgiven people and you've moved on? To be honest, I've never hated. Um, this specific person, mm. um, I have forgiven. And in a sense that um, some of the relationships that I decided, because when I was going through it, I blocked certain individuals because I did not want to see what was happening in that space. I needed my own time to heal, so I needed to disappear. Um, but when I reappeared, I knew that I was ready. I have held, I was ready to move on and tell my story and speak about it because I knew I was going to be asked about it. So I have forgiven and I have accepted the apology I've never received, which is okay. 
you know um sometimes you don't need closure and and that's okay as well i don't hate this person this person was a great you know part of my life for the past um couple of years and certain things that i've achieved now i wouldn't have achieved them if he was never part of my life so there's a lot of good it was just that the disappointment at the end it was so unexpected so sure, yeah so sure. and i i want to move on from this topic because it's not why we're here yeah um and and have you forgiven yourself because something that we often do in relationships and in in situations that are like that that are that involve the union of two people yeah is that we don't identify our toxicity yeah in why things don't, don't work, work out. out yeah have you taken time to evaluate find out what those toxicities were and move on from to that? be honest i have i have taken time um i am seeing someone um and it's a working progress i am not perfect and i'm not gonna sit here and act like oh i was this perfect little person and that's that that can't be it. it it takes two to get to a certain point um so i am working on my self in, introspection and learning more about myself and as i said i keep evolving i keep changing and i've picked up certain things and certain traits that i think also added sure. to the strain yes um however having said that I also understand that it stems from my upbringing. As I said earlier, for me, this was not the actual thing that that I could say. Oh my gosh! It's the most painful. It's the most thing. painful yeah, thing. Yeah. There are past I've traumas. Been, there's yeah. a, there are past traumas that I'd actually forgotten about them. Mm. Actually, until recently, I've there's certain things that I realized, and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that I went through this and I forgot about it. Something really hectic. And what, but when you start talking about things and unpacking things and understanding yourself, why am I like this? And why do I respond to certain situations the way that I do? Sure. Um, you then start thinking back and start unpacking things. And then you realize, hey, I've been dealing with things. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. Move on. Do you think that your, your decision then to join um, a TV Obviously, I'm sure you were approached, yeah. but then to say yes to, 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 to now taking your life and making it public yeah. was part of the rebirth after that time of being out of the limelight. To be honest, Lungelo, I think it is part of my rebirth. And I think this is the best decision I made for myself because this pushed me to tap into things and to actually learn more about myself sure. it actually forced me to be you know being in an uncomfortable position an uncomfortable position forces one to to work harder to yeah. push more and to want to do better and this show is actually one of the reasons that has pushed me to a corner such that i've started now learning more about myself and wanting to do better. I've always been a person, and I always tell people, my friends know this about me, Mina, I don't, I'm not scared of a challenge. If anything, I dive in head first. Niti, I will swim, I'll figure out when I'm in there. That pushes me to, to do more, to progress and, and get to the next level. If I'm in a comfortable position, I then become lazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking about your friends, would you say you have more genuine friends off camera than the friends that we know on camera um i do have genuine friends both off and on camera okay. to be honest um people maybe people know how libras are like <laughs> we we are very friendly people and the thing is we get drawn to like-minded people and for you to be my friend it doesn't take a day or two or years Within a minute, I, I know if I, you and I are going to form a relationship and because of how we engage. And I, I do have very good friends on camera and some friends that are off camera. I, I, I want to ask that because a lot of your friendships were challenged on camera. So is, 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 it's not a reflection of you and how you handle friendships. Yes, yes. No, it's not because um, certain instances, for instance, like um, the... The, everybody knows my issue with Nongu. So that part, um, generally, if I go through something like that with a friend, I remove myself 
I don't go back to unpack issues, to talk about issues and try to fix things and try to get an understanding so that somebody admits if they're right. I just, I just cut my losses and I move on. But it, because that's, that's also one of the hardest parts about the show because you're living this life on camera. Um, so you have to live it and unpack it. And unfortunately, because the time is so limited, it's compacted in such a small time. So you don't even have time to deal with your emotions and, and actually try to comprehend and understand another person's point of view. Sure. So everything just happens. And when you get in there, it's real feelings, it's real emotions. And you're just dealing with all of that. And generally, though, if, if, if it were for me, I wouldn't even have shot with her like have a scene or any discussion with her on the show either with with georgia as well i wasn't even going to give them a time of day i was going to move on with my life and exist if i see them it's hey hey and and it's okay i mean this is what how it is in real life yeah, yeah we go yeah. to events we see each other are we friends no mm -hmm. we see each other we cordial we say hi and we move on. We say hi and move on. We even take pictures <laughs> and smile. Yes. Because that's what normal people do. We don't hate each other. I don't sure. think they hate me. Yeah. Uh, I don't hate them. But the fact of the matter is, I want you to do well. Mm. But over there. Yeah, yeah. 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 I get that. You can't be in my personal, personal space, space, within yes. my boundaries. Yeah. Um, just do well in your, in your, in your own yes. corner. Yes. Yeah. In your own corner. Um, as, as we continue, I, I just want to explore, since you say what you went through wasn't the most difficult situation and pain in your life, do you think you've been able to identify what's the most traumatic experience you've been through? Um, yes, I, 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 I have. Um, am I ready to share it? Mm -hmm. uh, no. <laughs> I, I did share it, though, with, with my partner, okay. the person that I'm seeing now recently, because... Um, we were going through something and then again I, I stopped and I had to think about my role in the whole situation sure. and not point fingers. That's when a light bulb moment hit me with oh no man. So it, it's too it's too fresh okay. if if I could you know, get into it, then shooting a yeah, 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 no, um, yeah, but I have identified it and I know where it stems from. Uh, but amongst other things, um, was a loss of my mother, uh, in 2001. I was, I was quite young. Very, it sounds like you were um, very young. I was very, very young. Yeah. I'm the eldest daughter, well, I'm the eldest child. Um, I had younger siblings, six. Um, so there's six of us, so I had five youngest. My youngest brother was two, going on three. So when my mom died, we had nobody else. Uh, it was just me. This is in Sasimlaz? This is Sasimlaz. Yeah. So I have had to take on that responsibility of raising my siblings. Um, be a mom to them, figure out to go to my journey. I mean, I was, I was a kid, too. Um... This is crazy to me. You you are taking on the responsibility of being a mother. I'm just juxtaposing this with going on to a show and people are making fun of you and cr trying to create a narrative about your finances, but they don't know your story. No, they don't. They don't know how deep it comes from yeah. and to be where you are, how much it has taken to be where you are. Exactly. Yeah. Look, I, I'm very, I'm not ashamed of, of who I am and where I come from. If anything, I'm very proud of my journey because it, it, all of those things happened to prepare me for this specific moment. Um, but also I feel like, I always felt like there's a bigger reason for me to have gone through what I went through. Look, I went through the most. When my mom died, I had nobody. We had nobody. It was just me and my siblings. Sure. Um, so after that happened, um, I then had to put on my big girl panties, restaurant. I worked as a waitress. Mm. I was, dude, I've told, I, I think I mentioned the story to someone before mm. that. I walked some evenings, some, some evenings, I would walk from the Point Waterfront yeah. to a new lens. Because cool, cool, I'm saving the little that I have to be able to buy meals 
for Ekai so that my siblings go to school. Yeah, yeah. So I'm very proud of who I am. I People can call me broke or whatever the case may be. I know that I'm not broke. I know for a fact that I'm not broke. I, I, might, I might have financial challenges now, but I'm not where I want to be or I envision myself to be. But I'm better than I was two years ago. Way better. Way better, which yeah. means I'm progressing. Yeah. Every yeah. time I wake up, I am progressing. When I, your, your level of your scale, how do you view progress versus for me, for my family, for my siblings, to my siblings? I, I've, I've done amazing and, and the, I know they appreciate me. Yeah. Let's also speak about just progression. One, no two people are in the same trajectory. Thank there you. There are no two people who are in the same lane. Two, a lot of people ha are living an Instagram pressure life. Absolutely. Where um, they will be dressed in designer from the top to the bottom only to find that one of, only one in that top to bottom is real. <laughs> <laughs> or none. Or none. Or none, right? <laughs> Um, three, you are dressed in designer top to bottom, but you are five months behind on your bond and mm -hmm. you're running away from the bank. Yeah. Th there's a lot happening, but you, you're able to go and talk about somebody else. Um, people change cars all the time and we don't know why. You know, mm. things, things are happening. Not that it's wrong, but for you to be, go and point at someone's finances. <laughs> and, 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 you know, the funny thing for you to... Just to add on that, yeah. for you to point at somebody's finances when that very same person knows your yeah. finances, yeah. it's just that I don't believe in, you know, swimming in the mud just because uh, that's not who I am. And I'm not going to allow a person to make me somebody that I'm not. I've had to be a mother at a, at a young age when I did not have kids of my own yeah. to my siblings. And I hear people saying how much of a bad mother I was to my kids. Guys, I'm an amazing mom. Yeah. I know I am. I've always been. Because whatever decision I've had to take, it was not for my benefit. It was for their benefit as my children. I've had to think of what is best for them during that period when my, me and my ex-husband were going through a divorce. So I'm very clear. I knew that this was the best decision for them because I wasn't going to uproot my children from their normalcy after also having gone through the divorce of their parents breaking up. I wasn't about to do that. Yeah. I left the kids everything. I was the one who left the house. But the fact of the matter is I know the choices that are made and my kids, they know it. Um, now they've grown. We talk about it all the time. And they appreciate the decisions that I've made because sure. I've given them the life that, that they would have, have had if I'd taken them with me. Yes, 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 yes. How does divorce change a person? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's twofold. Uh, for me, I will speak about myself, right? Um, so having gone through divorce, at that moment, I didn't think I'd be able to move past the pain. That okay. also was the most incredible painful moment. That's why I said I have so many. Yeah, yeah. Because I was losing my kids. Yeah. And, and your life as you know my it. My life as I know it and and um, the normalcy and, and that, that comfort, you know, that, that comfort, you know, something that you have somebody to fall back on, somebody to share responsibility with. That was never, the, that wasn't the case. I was unemployed. I had just resigned from work because when I left Joburg, I could see my marriage was falling apart. Mm -hmm. So I left, I resigned from work to come back home only to find that home is no longer home, yeah. right? So if I uprooted my children, where was I going to take them? Sure. With what money? I didn't have an income. So again, this was me now starting over. Again. Again, <laughs> right? Yeah. So I couldn't have been selfish and said, I'll take him to the lawyers. I want to take the kids. He wanted the kids. I said, okay, great. Take the kids. Yeah. If now and give them a good life. Give them a good life. And, and the kids are with me now full time. And there was never a discussion of Uguti or you, you having the kids back, whatever the case may be. We are great co-parents. Uh, we are great co-parents, uh, but it started off, it was so bad. Tricky, yeah. I couldn't stand him. He couldn't stand the sight of me. And it was the worst thing because my kids were suffering. Our children were, were suffering because having to protect, when they're with me, they have to protect 
their dad when they with dad they have to protect mom so there's certain things i would say lash out and vice versa in their presence but they will do the best not to take in the bazaar up by using up vice versa yeah at some point i realized good to know man this is doing too much mm, to my it's children harming. it's harming to my kids and and then that's when i realized that i need to make nice with this guy um i i love that you honest about that sometimes when you have taken the decision as an adult to have children with someone yeah. it's beyond you yeah so what you feel about an ex-partner an ex-husband about each other guys it's neither here nor there neither here nor there neither here nor there um i remember i remember there there's an instance of a famous presenter um where the 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 man got lost all his jobs on tv and everything he was cancelled basically got to come a boy mm. and it was because of a video that his fiance leaked obviously yes. they were fighting between the yeah. two of them yeah. but essentially if you are going to do that as a partner what are you saying or in ganyam living in kokeli private school this is what i'm supposed to say so beyond your pay, your pain and your hate of yeah. hating me maybe because i cheated or i did something to you what about the 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 livelihood you are taking from your kids from your children, by blasting yeah. me out in the media yeah. so Um yeah. as parents we, you guys need to think beyond that. Yeah, true. Yeah. I think I think when you in the moment it it becomes very really difficult. Mm -hmm. But but he, time heals all wounds and it really does. Uh, time does heal because to be honest, I think it took me 3 years to be in a good place with my ex. Now we we're such amazing friends and that's why I'm saying that it's two side of the coin. Um divorce can change you. but for for the better or mm -hmm. the worst for me it was the worst but now it's it's so great like i call him anytime i'm like yo my negro i need data you know it's that kind of relationship mm -hmm. or he calls me like yo i'm fagelu petrol in van you know we we've got that he's like my brother now yeah, yeah. we we are really good friends and uh, my children are always saying you know mama You and dad are better as friends. Mm, like we mm, wouldn't want you to powerful. get back together yes, ever. Yes. My my eldest daughter well was friends. My old, yes, my eldest daughter also say, "Hey mama, I like you better with daddy as friends." Yeah. Need to actually nothing will ever happen between me and your dad because we share our, our common goal is you guys. We want the best for you guys. So it's easier for mm -hmm. us to get along because we share a common goal. So So there is that like uh, we are happy I'm happy I'm fine with that part of my life. Yeah, yeah. Is Lee still looking to have children? No. Evaluate <laughs> <laughs> your child. Evaluate your child. Lee is looking to uh build. Yeah. Make money yeah. and travel the world. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah, I'd love to sense. do that but in all honesty I was actually saying to my partner the other day that they I really want a quiet life. I get that. It you might find it it might sound weird um but I want to move away from a city life or from the limelight. I want when I want the limelight I want to be able to almost like switch tap on into, tap, tap into, into it, it and yeah. be like okay singing lang is obviously yeah. but then when I withdraw and retreat I want to have a home Sambe emakaya somewhere not even emakaya in an island somewhere yeah. where i drive a, I, i i i drive a bike mm. to 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 work and my job is a coffee shop mm. nearly five <laughs> kilometers away from yes. my low place where yeah. i stay or my low cottage like that's the kind of lifestyle that i want i just want to i want silence i want to silence the noise outside of people that don't know me. Yeah. That's the kind of life that I want now. And will I achieve it? For me to achieve it is for me to have that financial freedom because while I do that, the other things that I'm taking care of like my family, my siblings, my kids shouldn't suffer because mm. of my choice. Mm. I should also be able to continue doing what I need to. So unfortunately, I'm stuck here in the buzz and <laughs> in the fast life. <laughs> of the limelight. This song. This song is the Azama guys. Yeah, yeah. Um speaking of just a quiet life, I I've, I've seen you you've been very intentional in getting into spaces where you're public speaking, inspiring people, um especially in the women empowerment space. Is, has that been an intentional direction that you're taking? Um 
I've always um, been a person who loves giving back. Even when I was at the Zunguness with my, where um, I was running that venue uh, with my ex, um, I've always been involved in um, initiatives that are focusing on, on building and sharing the little that I have with other women, be it community upliftment programs um, through the foundation, Zoto Zungu Foundation, um, be it the high tea events where I invite other, you know, trailblazers, women to speak to other women and motivate them. Um, and life has always thrown me in positions where I take on a leadership role, be it at school, I've always had those kind of positions. So I feel like this is my gift. This is what I was given. And also when the opportunity of the reality TV show came, um, came on, came on um, I knew that this was a platform for me, not only to showcase just by leaving the drama and whatnot, but also just by being myself, yeah. teaching and getting through to other women. So I, I really enjoy that. Like it's because... It, it, and also, as I said earlier, I, it's not even about sharing my story because each person's story is different. Mm -hmm. it, it's a matter of whether or not you are at the right place at the right time. It's basically sharing a message of be consistent, keep pushing. Because if hard work pays off, if it were for hard work, I, I echo the same sentiments because yeah. then my grandmother would have been a billionaire. Mm -hmm. So it's not just hard work. In fact, uh, our grandparents worked harder than us. Exactly. And uh, atrocious conditions. Conditions, yes. 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 yes, that's exactly what I echo. And I hope people understand that, that it all, all it takes is be consistent because you don't know where, when your time is going to be. In the spirit of Women's Month, w what do you think women, are, say specifically black women, are not doing enough to support each other? Because there is a narrative that black women just w will not support each other. In fact, they are toxic towards each other. It is, it is the craziest thing to, to witness and to see because for the life of me, I don't get it. There is enough for everyone. Do you understand? We haven't even covered, you know, half of what everybody can do within the same space. So women generally have a tendency of competing. But, and also I think it boils back to how we were raised. Um, that, you know, Chimanda um, Ngozi said mm -hmm. that um, in that thing that we teach girls, you know, to, to aspire to marriage. Yes, And yes. we teach girls which they have to look a certain way in order to impress a man. And had we been taught, Ukuti, for a woman, you can't, I mean, as a woman, you can be your own person and it's okay to, as, to rise, I mean, to lift each other as you rise. That would have been a different, we would be in a different position altogether. But it's years and years and years of, you know, misguidance that has happened. All we can do is, 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 is change one woman at a time. And I intend to do that. But it is there. We, I don't know why women hate each other so much and why women compete so much. It, there's absolutely no reason for that. But all we can do is try to lead by example, which I try to do at all times. Even at, uh, I keep referring to the Zungunas because it's like the biggest space where I, I feel like I've made an impact. Um, I, used, I used to honestly, physically and actively be intentional looking for service providers that are women that are young that are unknown even if there's a performance that needed to be done uh, most people were launched at that space you put people on because i understood that had somebody had given me that opportunity yes. as well yes i'd be fine life yeah so all it takes is for another woman to say come mm. i'll walk you i'll walk with you through yeah. this journey yeah. or or when something comes up and it's something that I can't do, I'm like, oh, by the way, so-and-so, uh, there's something like this. But we don't do that. We want to do everything to a point of you become so overworked and as a result, you, you can't then deliver. I've had a friend of mine promising me jobs. <laughs> 
And to think that she's been failing to deliver, it's like, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? We could share the burden, we could share responsibility, we could share even the, the, the income that comes with the burden. Because if, 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 if we're sharing, then we're able to tap into more. Exactly. So, exactly. so instead, instead, instead of, 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 of 10,000, Ngabe share hundred to total seven and total thirty, for example. Yes. When ubambelo ten, when ufuna lo ten, kota futsi au kuazu ukulo kuzu ukete scope some seven. Yes. You you can't you don't want help. You don't want anyone else to assist you. Ufunu ba when u u ngoshi shilis o la la la. Guba when a u u women u bed bitch. Ufunu ba u bed bitch gula some space. And the thing is, life doesn't work like that. You need other people. For you to 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 execute um seven seamlessly, you can't do everything yourself because you are overstretching yourself, and then you will not be able to deliver. Then that means next time, the client will not want to deal with you. Um, th th there's something I wanna I wanna ask about. Um, what role? And in fact, rather. I had Baby Kele in that seat um, a few months ago from the beginning of the year, um, yeah. veteran actress. Yes. And she's also a person who, um, who's a healer. Um, I'm not sure if it's in the same dimension as you do it, but Yena, she consults and and stuff. And she told me that something that contributed um, to her latest divorce was that her ancestors were just telling her that this is not the person. And... Kwanintes doesn't have spiritually mm, for mm, her in that marriage. Mm. Um, do you do you ever think that it's hard to get into romantic relationships as a person who's spiritually gifted? Um, it is hard, to be honest. Uh, it's a constant struggle. Um, you know, <laughs> people think when you're dealing with ancestors, you're dealing with, you know. Amanda that are uh, unfathomable, Amanda that people that you can't actually engage with. I, on the other hand, when I speak to my ancestors, I imagine, I envision, I envision my grandmother, though I don't specifically speak to her, but I chat to her as if I would speak to her like this. You negotiate everything. Um, however, if that relationship is not good for you, mm -hmm. I can tell you, it will not last. Bam and it will never work. Yeah, and I'm you know the you nah. know the truth. <laughs> yeah. All it takes is for them to change their behavior. Yeah. And for them, that specific person would I change your behavior because it means if umuntu ako onai and onai as a challenger the work of the ancestors or also 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 ba interruption or a burden or a blockage for you to carry out your spiritual lead, your spiritual um, work um, so that person you must be rest assured would say you 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 when you're a spiritual person make an example how does a person cause a blockage or a stumbling block towards your spiritual for instance work? my past relationship yeah. uh, wouldn't have ever understood in the uh, he's never really I've never even seen him in the six years that I had been with him um, he wouldn't have never understood it because he had that fear well this is my now I, when I think about yeah. this, this is my perspective he had a fear you're tapping into an unknown power and it makes it, it, it will make him uncomfortable dealing with the unknowns. You know how intellectuals mm. are. So I knew for a fact, Uguti, I wouldn't have started the spiritual journey if I was with him. That's why I say as much as isn't, where I am is exactly exactly where I needed to be. Sure. So also with my current partner, I know Uguti, there's certain elements. Because me and I, AMI spiritual journey is, is, I don't know if it's the same as, as the others. First, after a while, now my great grandfather is coming through. So, you know, with healing properties, I'm still learning in my dreams. Um, I, I haven't started consulting. 
not that I can't, because sometimes and I just say something and I'm like, oh my gosh. But also they're very picky in terms of who they bring into their personal space and who they share the information with. Abanding Hamanabo, you mean. So Gianzeg, oh Goko, like my, my guy and I, my grandmother loves him, right? I know for a fact Duguti, he loves she loves the guy. My grandfather, on the other hand, ukokoam umkul. Ugoba guya ngai ngabeng sheli angnan dota ngabeng sheli je. Yeah, se benz and jum se benz wake because <laughs> even neva tozake iva tozake I can't wear them and use them to pray if I've been with a man. Finally, ni fast for quite some time. Then ginga go. But there's he's so powerful when I tap into. His, him, his, his strength, and in that space, I, I, I'm a different person. I even sound different, mm. and sometimes I sit different and I engage different, and sometimes I, f I look at women. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's hot, yeah. and it's the weirdest thing because I've never been that person. Will I ever date a woman? I will not. But the fact of the matter is, and who ubano page So, in and in this is instance. I just tap my grandmother's and it's like, guys, I'm cool, man. I'm not doing I can't. I love this man. Like, he can't. And also, I'm not doing this over over okay. again. I, I, okay, that's it's funny you say that because the big narrative nowadays is that women should not be limited in either how many men they date and if they feel like they are no longer happy in a relationship, they should leave. Yeah. So here you're saying, yeah. that's basically what you're saying. Yeah. But also, shouldn't women be free enough to say, I'm done, I'm going to start over? As many they times as they wish. They should be. They should be. Uh, it really depends on a person. Mina, I love relationships. I love love. Um, I've got this fear. Again, it boils down to my abandonment issues. Mm -hmm. um, as growing up, I don't like being alone at all. I w always want to have that sort of, even if you don't physically do anything for me, but knowing that, that I've got someone. Yeah. I mean, when I was shooting the show, I would phone him at night, we said, you know, I want to have that. I can't wake my kids up. Again, <laughs> you know, Karen. But the fact of the matter is, I love love and yeah. I, I'm a traditional person mm. when it comes to love and growing up in a family of singles, my grandmother never married my grandfather. So my mother never married my father. So Uma took my grandmother's surname. So say it's been now, so much. Um, 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 um. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm, I, I was this fear of the of of doing that, of, of doing that to my children and yeah. also i feel like mm. it has to stop somewhere mm. i have to break gener i'm here to break generational cases mm. and one of it in lento yoguba opet bitch is a single woman power no because i grew up around very strong-minded women women that would say it's my way or the highway so i'm trying the best that I can to be submissive and understanding, but it's so difficult as well. Because mm -hmm. it's almost like at some point, at some instances, finally is a role of being submissive and being a woman. True. So you you can't have a man, a macho man, next to you, because there are moments where your 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 manlyhood will come out and kubengazutu yam challenge or yam disrespect. Finally, kube kono kube umuntu who understands. Good, okay. So koni kesha manje. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? But it's it's very difficult to do that. Mina bandla guys, ang safund embaga lo kung zotlalan jengo koko. Zotlalan jengo koko no mang tolu kelnyan. We we're going to be nearing the end of our conversation, but I I just I just want to 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 get into this. Um, the the TV show uh. As you said, there have been many moments that have made you cry, even in your private space where people don't see that that episode made me cry or that scene that we shot, it made me cry or it unearthed a side of me that I didn't know existed yeah. or a side of me that is just too extreme. Yeah. Um, without breaking your NDA that you, 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 you've you <laughs> done with the show, because there's, there's rules around that, yeah. of course. Should you go back to the show, what are you doing differently? What side of Slee are we seeing? 
I am praying, right? Uh, because also there's no telling how this thing unfolds. Remember, this is reality TV. I can plan all I want. Um, the first, sh um, the first season for me, because the, the the past season three was my season one. Mm. Um, it was meant to be an introduction. I was meant to share my journey, my spiritual journey. I was meant to share my businesses, which. I did not get to do because I spent the bulk of it um, trying to defend myself mm -hmm. and trying to show people who I really am. And I'm hoping this season I get to do that. Um, I get to showcase Usli as a brand, as a human being, more Usli as a mother, Usli as a businesswoman, because I am a businesswoman outside of despite of what everybody might think. Um, I've got an interior design company, which I didn't really showcase much on. I've got a clothing line, which is called Zawe Culture, which I haven't really showed much on. Um, um, I'm involved in um, petroleum company. I'm a partner um, in a petrol co petroleum company, and I'm trying to tap into that space, which is very difficult. Yeah. Those are the challenges that we should be seeing and engaging on sure. for women that want to get into those energy spaces. Sure. And I didn't show case all of that um besides all of that I'm, I'm a mother you know and i'm a spiritual person so there's so much there's so many elements to what uslindile is and i feel like when i do come back if i do come back <laughs> uh, so i'm gonna share i would like to share most of of that but if that doesn't happen again it's okay but also showcase more my my on-screen relationships because yeah. those relationships that i have made with those women i feel like they one of the most important relationships to me because i draw so much from them i learn so much from them it's almost like when you come into a space and you observe and you're like okay and also you get into a space and you, you get to network with people that you wouldn't generally network with. For me, I see this as an opportunity, but not only that, it's just relationships that make sense because you always have to think about progression. If a relationship or a friendship that you have is keeping you stagnant or it's pulling you down, let it go. Yeah. Move on to like-minded people, people who share similar visions or people that you can learn something from so that you better yourself and people that want to see you do well. That is my thing. So these relationships, I feel like I'm surrounded by people that actually want to see me do well and get past this funk that I'm in of being financially overstretched. <laughs> <laughs> One of my last few questions. Um, what quote do you live by if there is a quote that you live by? Um, the one that I've said earlier. Mm -hmm. You are exactly where you're supposed to be. Sure. Um, to be honest, because it's it really doesn't help thinking about the past or tomorrow, what's going to happen tomorrow. Live in the moment. Enjoy the moment. Yes, plan for the future. But where you are today, you exactly where you need to be. It might not be in a good place, but life has a way of showing you later on, with, oh, okay, this is why I went through what I went through. It was preparing me for this moment. Her name is Slindile Wendy Ndlovu. I'm Lungelo KM. The show is Engineer Your Life. Another insightful episode. I hope you enjoyed this. As I said, it's part of our series for Women's Month. Um, she's a power woman. It's undeniable. She's a businesswoman. She's an entrepreneur. Um, she's a reality TV star. I don't know if she ever <laughs> thought that would be part of her caliber one day. But you know, life is, is it, life just comes at you. And as she said, you must just accept life as it is and, and follow the journey and understand the journey and be who you are there. Once again, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to join as a member. And don't forget to like this video. I'll see you on the next episode.